All right, y'all, before we get into this mukbang, special shout out to all my Patreon people. Here's some shout outs to my extra value meal tier. Uh, Mar Marquise Mateo, Noe Jamarillo, Francis Lau, Sheldon Jackson, Brian Anzaldo, Tessie King, Junior Lay, Luis Seijo, Nelson Vargas, and Brandon Hamill. And special, special shout out to my secret menu tier. And y'all get a little special message. Chance Connor says to check out his music. What Chira Walker says she's been watching for nine years. Thank you. 2K says he's been watching since the little crazy Kiki Wyatt vlog. Oh my God, that's such a long time ago. And then these people, uh, I sent them, the, I sent the message kind of late to send me their uh, special message. So these people didn't send it on time. But uh, Sean Kunanan, G, Raziel Abinze, Ala Jibril, and Brian Zwang. Thank you to everybody that donates. Thank you to everybody that's part of the Patreon, especially my two upper tiers. I appreciate y'all so much. Here's the mukbang. All right. All right, so you guys have been loving the mukbangs, mukbangs lately. Um, I hit up my boy Kev on stage hey. because I, you know, I just I enjoy you as a person and a, and a creator, Kev. I was like, "What do you want to eat, man?" And he was like, "Tim, are you hitting me up for a mukbang? <laughs> then let's do the lobster, the sea, yes. the boil." I was like, "Yeah, okay." That, that this I, big lobster, <laughs> that is a mukbang. Yes. It's got to be wild and ridiculous. I love it. I love it. And I just, I love seafood as it is. Uh, so it smells so good. Yes. And I purposely like <laughs> timed my hungry. <laughs> I was like, okay, I had enough cereal. So I'm not ridiculously hungry, mm -hmm. but I am ready. Let's get it. A uh, shout out to uh, Kicking Cajun because they really uh, hooked me up here. Um, you know, we got lobster, we got shrimp, we got, yeah, you do the thing. We, I don't even know what that does. Apparently, my wife told me what it does is it helps the camera focus. focus. So if it's a oh. small, like, it's from makeup brushes, and they were holding them like this, and the camera wouldn't focus. Yes. You see? It's not. It's not working. I don't know. It, it, it worked. It worked. All right, whatever, man. Yeah, man. Okay, so we got... I got you some lobster, we yes. got some shrimps, we got some king crab leg, mm -hmm. uh, we got some Alaskan crab, and uh, rice. Rice, if what you is want it. it. Is this just sauce? That's just extra sauce. And I actually had, this is my mom's seafood sauce. One of my worst like regrets in life is I didn't move to LA in time to get yeah. at your parents' restaurant. You had 20 years. I, I didn't have $20, though. <laughs> <laughs> But at least I got your mom's sauce. This is my mom's sauce. And you told me once I was going to be invited to your parents' house. You will. Pre-corona. You still will. Okay. This is my mom's seafood sauce. We're working on bottling it. But it's it's, it's a... Because I feel like you can put it on anything. Steak, chicken, seafood especially. Mm -hmm. It's like a Thai seafood sauce. But I think my mom does it a little bit different. Perfect. Um, if you get too much of the... Uh, the gobbly goo here, it's mm -hmm. a, it get a little spicy, but I say if you don't really eat spicy, stick with just the, the liquid portion. Okay. All okay. right. So let's get it. Any, we just jump in? Let's just jump in. <laughs> I'm so happy. And then, you know, at some point, we'll, we'll have a conversation. Maybe we'll, mm. maybe we'll come on, you know? First of all, mm -hmm. mom's sausage flames. Mm-hmm. Sausage flames, too. Let me ask you something. Yes. Do you uh, suck the heads of the shrimp when you eat the shrimp? <laughs> Don't suck the head off that crawfish. No, mm, you don't. Or the shrimp. Mmm, okay. Actually, shrimp, I have a weird thing. Seeing the eyes freaks me out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I prefer it to be, like, peeled and de-veined mm. first. But, you know. But, I, I tell people all the time. You gotta, look your, you gotta look in the face. If you wanna be man, you gotta be real about it. No, and look, I tell people this too. Aside from looking in the face, if you wanna enjoy the seafood boil, you gotta be done to eat a little shrimp, boo-boo. A little <sighs> shrimp. Yeah, I was hoping you wouldn't say it, Tim. <laughs> I just don't want to, that's, it's always a thing, I can't, I try not to. It's not even really poo. What is it? Please tell me anything that helps it easier to go down because I saw it and I was like, ah, just pull it off, Kev. It's spinal fluid. Is it really? <laughs> no. It, it's really, it's doo, doo Yeah, I, that's what I heard. It's doo, -doo? Mm, Pretty much. <laughs> I've heard that shrimps are the bugs of the sea. I mean, all these things are really the bugs of the sea. They just crawl around down there. So we so we're basically eating bugs. We're basically eating ocean ocean insects. Ocean insects. Crustaceans. So these are the roaches of. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to say roaches, but yeah. I mean, you gotta if you're gonna go, mm -hmm. you gotta go all the way in. Mm-hmm. 
you know, we always like I watch bizarre foods. And I'm like, man, you would never eat bugs. And somebody was like, yo, shrimp are bugs. And I was like, maybe I would eat bugs. Exactly. This is different. Sh- bugs are delicious. If shrimp's a bug, it's a delicious bug. You ever eaten a bug before? I've eaten grasshoppers. Mm-hmm. Canada, we went to the bug museum in Vancouver. Took my family up there one time. You know what I'm jealous about? You went to, uh, you've been to Japan. You haven't been? I've never been. And that's like my main, like. How have you not been? You've been know. to Singapore a couple been of to times. Singapore. I love Singapore, but um, Japan is my bucket list city, or like Tokyo, mm-hmm. that I haven't been to that I really is on my list. Tim. See, you be one, you always wait to go to places until there's a brand deal, business trip. <laughs> or a honeymoon. You gotta just go places sometime just to go. Japan, I would I would just go just to go. I went for ten days. Mm-hmm. Joe from Just Kidding News was my like private. He was there. He was there no, no, he was. Oh. He was just telling me he had just went. Mm-hmm. So he was telling me where to go for the ramen, for sushi, mm-hmm. for even stuff for my kids. Mm-hmm. Like he was dope, man. My kids loved it. My wife loved it. My boy Josh came. He it's it's my favorite vacation. I would love to go. Tim, it's everything. It's it's food, it's fashion, it's mm-hmm. crazy. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> it's it's architecture. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to enjoy that that much because my kids are like, no, ain't nobody trying to see no temple. <laughs> I'm like, bro, you don't realize these are these are so old mm-hmm. and like they're just like, nah, bro. Best ramen you ever had in your life? Tim, it's not even a competition. Oh man. It, the ramen that Joe told me to, and then like a whole bunch of my other friends who went to Japan all said this same place. Yeah. I got it written down. I'll text it to you. Okay. Yeah. Please do. It man. was like butter. Mm. It mm. was like, and as a black kid, we grew up on ramen. I didn't realize that. That like packaged ramen is a derivative. It's not the real ramen. No, it's not the real thing, but it's like, it came from like people who really made ramen. They were like, let's make this a way that you could like mm-hmm. make it at home, mm-hmm. you know, for, and, you know, for a cheaper cost. Mm-hmm. But. Black people bro, and ramen, it's a long history. Mm-hmm. Poor people in general. Right. And ramen, because my mom, bro, she was like 13 cents a pack. <laughs> you know how many packs I can buy with a yep. dollar? You know what I'm saying? So, but when you eat it in Japan, hot with the real broth and pork belly and the egg. Mm, I love and it. And they don't make it. This place does it. They make it as you order it. So it's not sitting. There's no, it's just like. There's a spot. Um. So my favorite ramen place out here. It's in. It's only in these Japanese markets. These Japanese. Supermarkets. Oh, really? It's called a Mit- Mitsuwa Japanese markets. There's like a handful of them. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a tiny ramen place in there called uh, um, uh, Santuka or um, Hokkaido Santuka, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're so traditional with it, they don't even allow you to take it to go. They're like, no, really? you need to enjoy it here. You don't. We uh, we don't want you to have like the the, the broth and noodles. How it's not supposed to be had. Yeah. Like, no to go. What well, it's to go now because of the Rona. But right, right, right. I'm gonna I break, respect that. I'm gonna break this over. Oh, I thought it was gonna be a little more sexy than that, but it's okay. <laughs> See, Tim, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> you just jump all the way in. You don't care. No. So since you don't suck the uh, guts out of the shrimp. <laughs> I'm assuming you don't f with the lobster head juice either, huh? Tim. So I'm gonna just. I'm a tails guy. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna pour it on this rice. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> okay, so the yellow, the yellow uh, stuff inside the the lobster head, it's called a uh, tabbouli, I think. The green stuff that's in the like in the body, that's the tamale. That's the liver and the pancreas. Oh, oh, oh so that's it's liver and pancreas. Yep. Oh. That's my favorite. I know. I'm <laughs> mixing it in rice and. Shit. See, this is where I live, okay? <laughs> right here, nothing in here ever I, looks like I, that. I feel that, I feel that. It's considered a, a, a delicacy, Kev. It always is. <laughs> it always is. So what was it, though? Is it just guts? It's basically like um, the, uh, I think it's like the, uh, the pancreas or some shit oh. of the lobster. <laughs> and then people will like to, you know, they'll make a sauce out of it, mix it with the rum. How did you, where did you know that from? Like, how did you so come che- across that information? So check this out. As a kid... Whenever we'd have crab, whenever we'd have lobster, whenever we'd have shrimp, my mom would always be like, yo. Well, she wouldn't say yo, but. <laughs> I'm sure she did. She, she said the Thai version of yo. She would always make sure, um, she'd be like, yo, try try this, um, the the middle the, the middle part, the, the, mm-hmm. the juices, you know, mix it in the rice, blah, blah, blah. So I kind of just got used to doing that. Um, and then as I got older, I started watching the Food Network and yeah, started yeah, shooting yeah. the food show, shooting Send Foods with David. Yeah. Because you know, we did a whole lobster episode. We went to Maine for a lobster festival. And um, and that's where we learned what it was called and what it is. We caught lobsters. 
But you already grew up on this. I grew up eating it. Yeah. Yeah. On that part. On that, yeah, I would, I would like, I mean, if ever we had lobster or if ever we had crab, we would always like bust open the head and, and take the juice and mix it in the rice. <laughs> uh, listen, did you know that, I'm sure you knew, that <laughs> lobster used to be like a, considered a poor man's yeah. food? Yeah. And then they just got a great marketing team and now it's <laughs> rich people stuff. I don't know. I think it's the same thing that happened to like oxtail, you know, because oxtail also used to be a poor man's food. Really? Yeah. Oxtail always been expensive in my lifetime. Really? It's always the most expensive thing on the Jamaican uh, menu. Right, but it was like I think before it really got popping like that, it was like a poor man's food. Mm. So they would just something people would just throw away. When people got hip, I think is when all of the prices started to raise. Right. You know, the brick, the price of the brick going up. Mm-hmm. Nah, Tim. <laughs> I can't do it with you, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> so you watch a lot of Food Network? Man, love Food Network. That's my dream job, actually. Yeah, see, and look, that's why I really got into food, too, because I, I always tell people, right, there you go, Kev. This is what I, see how <laughs> yeah, the I, color is reminiscent? <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying about Food Network? I was saying how, um, you know, one of the reasons I really got into food, oh, your jersey's getting a little sloshy I, I, I should have thought of it. Uh, I yeah. didn't think about it. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't get any uh, bibs either. No, I'm sorry, good, man. We're dirty. So, um, you know, I always tell people, my mom, even though, like, we were, we didn't have a lot of money growing up, my mm -hmm. mom always made sure the food was really good, you know? Yeah. So, when I grew up watching the Food Network and all that, I didn't know what half the, the food was, but I was like, I really want to try yeah. whatever this stuff is. And I think that's a big reason why... I kind of like just got really experimental with everything. Yeah. I'm like, as soon as I got so money. preparing for Food Network. Yeah. Your eventual job. And I was just like, man, look, now that I can afford to eat all this stuff, I want to I wanna eat all the things, you know? <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite, what's the Food Network show that you would feel you would best want to host? Um, that would use your skills the best? I mean, probably just um, real simple, uh, like probably just diners, drivers, and dives, you know? Yo, that is my favorite show. Right, because he can, you can tell he knows his food, but also he can go to, you know, like, he'll be eating everything from fancy to, you know, like, you know, grilled yeah. sandwiches, you know? That's what I do on tour. I basically do a free version of diners, drivers, and dives. Mm -hmm. I go to the city, you know, and because of the internet, you can ask people who live there, like, yo, what's the best place to eat? Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you what's real, not the touristy spots. Right. And then you go get what they get, and I've just been doing it for, I've been auditioning for years for that, you know, show, but nobody from that one comes. <laughs> just, hey, once you start eating some uh, shrimp head guts, they're going to hit you up, Kev. But I'll, I'll do it on my own before <laughs> I ever do that. I was actually pitching a similar show, I shot a pilot for it too, where um, you only eat based off locals' uh, suggestions. Their called, recommendations? Yeah, it's called Underbelly. Wow. Ah. Yeah, yeah, and I shot so a pilot. Food Network? Nah, just, um, well, at first it was like I was pitching it at New Fronts, just digital stuff, you know? You've been to New Fronts? Yeah, the New Fronts a couple of times. I had a whole presentation. At New Fronts? Yes, bro. Well, no, look. It was, it was, because, you know, New Fronts is like a whole, like a, like a few days, right? Yeah. So it was, um, the company I was doing that show with, it was, um, what was it called? Astronauts Wanted. Mm-hmm. It was a small digital company. And we were pitching this show. They had a whole. They had me get on stage and say a little really? shit and all that. Didn't get picked up. But that's the nature of the business. Man, I told my homegirl, <laughs> Hollywood is like being in the NBA, mm -hmm. but ninety-eight percent of your shots get blocked mm -hmm. or stolen or pushed out of bounds. You're like, it's literally. It's soccer, it, <laughs> bro. It's so uh, soccer. Yeah. Because you, you make one goal that wins the, the whole thing, literally. and that's what you're waiting on. It. You're running around for, for the for whole time. Your whole life. One goal. Yeah. It's been a whole bunch of draws. What was your first goal in Hollywood? Mm. Score, scored. Oh well, to be honest, you know, because I was doing the YouTube stuff for a while, and I started YouTube because Hollywood just wasn't. Um, they weren't letting you play soccer with them. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so actually, I tell people all the time. When I actually got on Wild and Out, it was a it was a big like validating thing for me yeah. because I had been telling people, you know, even before YouTube, like I specifically remember starting YouTube and people being like, ah, you would never get on TV, like you're not like mm -hmm. uh, traditionally attractive enough, or they would never put an Asian dude on TV. Traditionally, just call me ugly. <laughs> it's actually worse to say you're not traditionally attractive. I don't mind that because then because then it's saying you're not. You're not a pretty white boy, which I understand. Okay, got you feel it. Me? Got it. Because I know I'm cute. Uh, out here, <laughs> big Tim. So, Chararangsu. 
Chantarong soup. There you go. I forgot the end. Yeah, that's man. My bad, that was bro. really good. I've been practicing before I came. I was, I was, <laughs> that's why I stayed outside for 10 more minutes. <laughs> I remember them denying me that. And then, oh, the sauce? I know. Your mom is out here. And I just remember. Brand new, you need it. Well, I'm working on it, bro. We're trying. I got you. And um, I remember, like, just even opening my mouth, like, to rap, people would, like, start laughing before I mm-hmm. even really started saying anything. So the fact that I got on a show um, and I was rapping and I was being funny. Yeah. And after being on YouTube, doing my thing, and people and, and people knew that that's what a goal of mine. So yeah. When I got on actual TV, it was very, like, it was like, okay. I did it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, look at that. How are you? Man, I don't know that I've achieved any goals yet. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what it was? My bad. I did. Hmm. My own financing and producing my own tour. Mm. And specifically, the London date okay. of that tour. Because, like, you know, we had done 50 cities in the U.S., which was great. Like, you know, I really did that tour and didn't know if it was going to work or not. Mm-hmm. If it didn't work, I was just going to be broke. And you funded that all yourself? Funded it all myself. That's amazing. Uh, I'm all about ownership. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when we were at the London show and it sold out and it was so freaking hot outside and mm-hmm. people stayed outside to take pictures and I'm like, bro, I'm actually in England and I had people come from like Germany and Spain because like London was as close as as it got for them. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I wasn't obviously big enough to go to to Germany and have a big show. Mm-hmm. So having all, you know, you know, all these British fans, UK fans really rocking with me and being there mm-hmm. and not having nobody who put me on to that. Mm-hmm. Like there was no promoter. I wasn't on somebody else's show. That was like, come see Kev on stage. That's you dope. know, and my, and my friends, that was like, bro, I could do that. For the rest of my life. That's dope. That's one of the things that makes me the saddest about coronavirus. Mm, not being is able to tour. Tour, t- touring and also not being able to go to London. <clears throat> mm. You know what I'm saying? Because they support you from over there. But they, you know, I've been in the United States before I toured. I had performed everywhere. Mm-hmm. So you had a chance to see me. But if you live in London, I don't blame you. You're not coming to the States. Funny story about London. When I was out there for a show one time. You know, like I said, we were trying to be on our, our foodie situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Nando's. Oh, I, I love Nando's. I love Nando's. Did you did you hate it? You I hated didn't it. hate you it. You hated it. You thought it was too hyped up. I, I the hype got to me. I expected the best food of my life. It was solid. Mm-hmm. I just thought it was like I thought God invented chicken, chicken when I went there, and it was just like, oh, this is cool. Oh, I love it. Did it's you good. did you pour on the peri peri sauce? I did. I'm not a big spicy fan though. Ah, okay, okay, I see, I see, I see. Okay, yeah. so we were in London. In the car, and I was asking, and, our, our, and, uh, and you guys have heard this story before, I think. But I haven't, so pretend along so, with yeah, me. So yeah, just, just just play along. So we asked our the guy that was driving us around, I was like, uh, and his name was Segar, I think, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, yo, Segar, what's like a, a, a weird food? What's like a really specific food to eat out here in London? What's something that like... You know, the, what's your specialty out here? Yeah. And uh, he was like, oh, maybe... Uh, he had, like, an interesting accent, right? Yeah. He was like, oh, hmm, maybe a uh, borado? And we were like, borado? What's that? What's, <laughs> what, 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 what is that? Something it? new. What is that? I'm down to try some, some borados. And he was like... <laughs> I was like, how, 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 what is it? And he was like, you know, you can have, like, mashed borados, uh, fried borados. Mm. And I was like, you talking about potatoes? <laughs> And it sounds familiar he now. He was literally talking about potatoes. <laughs> potatoes was interesting. I guess so. It's a cigar. He came. He was like, "Bro, I ain't never seen no potatoes out here, bro. <laughs> These things are lit." But yeah, man, I miss I miss traveling. I definitely miss you know. Well, you London. travel a lot. Yeah, yeah. We finally got to go on our honeymoon before the, the lockdown. Oh, thank bro, God. when I tell you, I, when I saw those pictures, I immediately went online and was like, <laughs> "Googled it." I googled it. Mm-hmm. I was all in. And I know you had waited for that. Man, let me tell you, not only have we been waiting because of, like, we just didn't go on the honeymoon right away, but mm-hmm. um, when me and Chia even first started dating, she was like, man, I've always wanted to go to this mm-hmm. place or something similar. You know, she just yeah. wanted to go to the huts on the water. My yeah. wife, same thing. Yeah. Literally, huts on the water, look underground, blue, mm-hmm. wherever that is, mm-hmm. Bora Bora, Bali, mm-hmm. Indonesia, mm-hmm. I need this postcard. And I need it now. You know, it was crazy. One time we were walking back to the room and uh, it was like a big old like stingray, like literally went under the house. 
That we, really? The hut that we stayed in, yeah. So y'all had the one right over the water? Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like if you go, if you can't stay there, just wait until you can. That's what I'm saying. You it can't was, stay at a place and then go, go over there. And stay in the actual hotel. Nah, no, man. No, 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 no. You got to do it. You got to do it like, you got to do it like it's for real. We got to do it like what we've been saving uh, tabs on our, like, you know. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, internet. Yeah, TV, yeah. yeah, all that. The goals. What was that place? Um, That specific place was called... Um, Bo- Boris, Bo- Baros, Baros. Mm. Was it? Where was it? <laughs> Indonesia. That was in the Maldives. Maldives. Yeah. And people always say you should go to the Maldives now because it's like it's it's sinking into the ocean or something like that. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say because it's, the flights are cheap, not because it's not gonna exist. Because it's not gonna exist. My um, that's climate change. Mm-hmm. My grandma. Uh, she started going on cruises to Alaska when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. She literally came to my high school graduation, and then the next day was on a cruise to Alaska. Word. And she's went every year, and she was like, "You can tell what you, you can tell the Earth is getting hotter." Oh, really? Because there's less been less and less snow every year, less and less wildlife every year. She was like, "It's really not even like." She was like, "Alaska looks more like Seattle hmm. now than you know when she first went when I graduated in 2001." She was like, it was almost all snow. And she went last in 2019. Mm-hmm. And she was like, I'm not even going anymore. It's not. Because she's from El Paso. And, uh, you know, it's, bas- it's basically just dirt there. You go uh, on a lot of cruises? I I didn't go on a lot. But I've been. I don't know what a lot is. But I've been on like five or six. I don't think I'm going to go on one no more. I've never been on a cruise. It's a great way to vacation. I'm a, I'm a little. I don't. The open water freaks me out a little bit. Really? I'm not a good I can't really I can swim yeah but I can't I can't tread okay mm-hmm. so I can get from one side of the pool to the next but if you were stuck in the water you wouldn't but if someone told me stay in that area and just be right and not drown I would you wouldn't make it I would drown yeah but you so you didn't feel weird when your hotel room was over the water I mean that was okay because it was still kind of it was like attached to like a bridge and got it you got know. it and, and, and you're on the cruise ship <sighs> But what if it what if it sinks though? Make up both. <sighs> <laughs> now I ain't gonna hold you. Mm-hmm. One thing that is weird about being on a cruise is when you can look anywhere in all directions and you see nothing but water. Yeah, that would freak me out. It is freaky. It's like, bro, if we get stuck here, it's a wrap. Yeah, that's what ain't I'm saying. Ain't no ain't no land as far as your eye can see, and especially at night. That's what I'm saying. You can't see that. <laughs> but you oh, can see at, like five cities at night? in four days. No, thank you. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> what are you scared of, Kev? What are your fears? My biggest fear probably is my dream not being what I thought it was. Okay. Like, especially in this business, mm-hmm. you think it's one thing, and then, like, as you progress and stuff, you're like, oh, this isn't exactly what I thought it oh, was. Oh, so you're saying, like, chasing after something and being and getting there and being like, this is not. Hey, and mm-hmm. getting there and seeing the Wizard of Oz is just <laughs> a dude behind a thing, mm-hmm. you know? It's like... I don't ever want to get lost in the journey that I realize like maybe this path isn't going where I want it to go mm. and and I keep on pushing to that and then realize it cost me more than I wanted to cost right. me or Spend whatever. Spend all this time chasing just to get there and just like, to get there. Was like, worth it. Actually, it was cool. Like right. you know what I mean? Like the Waynes, they always say their creativity was at their best before they made it, before they had money because you know the lack of having stuff is what made them mm-hmm. more creative. And then when they actually had money and budgets, they were just like, I oh, don't know, man. It's mm. too easy now. Mm. So, you know, this jersey's ruined. <laughs> so I, I don't want it to be like that where it's like, man, you get all this money or all this fame. Mm-hmm. But you know, like a lot of famous people be like, actually, I prefer when I was broke. Yeah. J. Cole said that. A Cardi B, she was like, I don't wish I could just go back to stripping Really? Like, yeah, she was like, uh, it was one interview, she was like, I used to be able to go to my, my homegirl's kid's birthday party to Chuck E. Cheese. Mm. Like, I can't do... Well, the hassle. Yeah, yeah. Michael B. Jordan was like, he was like, low-key, my career was, I was pretty, like, cool. Mm-hmm. But once I did Black Panther, I couldn't even go to the mall anymore. Mm. Like, I don't know if I want to be... That famous. Nah, man. Like, there was a time an Uber driver came to my house. <laughs> I told you a story? No. Bruh, Tim. Tell me. Came to my house. My kids there. My wife is there. Yeah. Drops, uh, not Uber, uh, Uber Eats or Postmates. Okay. Drops my food off, mm-hmm. right? Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Mm-hmm. Right. Go sit down, open it up, 
And the app is, a number's called me through the app. Okay. So I'm like, oh, yeah, hello, did you forget something or whatever? He's like, actually, Kev, I'm a fan, man. Could you come back outside and take a picture? Okay. And I was like, what? <laughs> I don't, I'm at home. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know what it's like. You put the, okay, you're going out. You prepare to be yep. Tim. Right. The, the artist Tim. Right. The YouTuber, the the low key famous Tim. But when you're at home, when you're in sweats, home, especially if you went out of your way to order some some Uber Eats, you definitely weren't trying to see anybody. Definitely wasn't in that mood. And then I'm like, bro, this person knows where I live, mm. where my kids are. There's no, you know what I'm saying? So low key, one of the best things to come out of Corona is the drop off delivery. Right. You know what I'm saying? They're like, they leave it at the door, ring yeah. the doorbell, and leave. You're done. And I wait. Yeah, until so they go, gone. yeah, and you know what I'm saying. If somebody has to answer the door, then there's a chance that they recognize me or my wife or my kids or whatever. Yeah, no, I hit them with a thank you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to make sure. Because you never know. I mean, most people aren't crazy, but some people are. Some people are. No. It only takes one crazy person. You know, Tim. <laughs> It's getting everywhere. No, you're good. Are you sure? It's, it didn't get on the chair, so we good. <laughs> All right, Tim. I'm, I've been trying not to go hard on these because I don't want to get... But it's really hard to control crab leg juices. You just got to... Look, because you're all over here. Get you Extend your... Oh, uh, you're right, Tim. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? I, 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 Ooh. See, that's what, that's what I recognize. That's what I know. What's in your rice? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's what I'm talking about. Although, don't you feel like crap legs? The per capita amount of work to meat <laughs> ratio, that might not be worth the work. It's an experience. Well, the spiky ones are always so. The, oh, the know. king crab is the worst. But it's so good when you get but in there. But the meat is worth it. I know, I know. It's more expensive, more work. I mean, that's why these types of places are so popular because it's it's more like an experience. It's definitely an experience. You know what I'm saying? It's a fun time to be had just by everybody there. But I'm going to tell you, some of the fine dining restaurants, now, in their defense, they're not as good as, as Cake Occasion. Mm -hmm. But the pre-cracked? Oh, yeah. Crab legs? I'm not mad. Oh, it's the best. Because you get the experience, experience the flavor without the work. Did you, um, were you a big fan of uh, buffets? Man. Yeah. The Win Buffet in Vegas, have you been? Of course. Tim. Uh wait, wait, no. I, you know what? The I've been to the the Cosmo uh has a really good mm -hmm, one called mm -hmm. the Golden Spoon, I think. And then um Caesar's Palace. Oh, Caesar's is great. The the ba 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 Bacchanal. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. We but, had Caesar's Palace buffet for Chris for Thanksgiving one year. It was the oh, worst man. experience of my life. Really? The oh, because it was packed. My grandma. It was her, she didn't want to cook Thanksgiving this year. Mm -hmm. So she was like, let's go to Vegas. And, and it's like, <clears throat> kind of even between LA and Vegas and El Paso and Vegas. Okay. Right? Flight wise or drive wise, whatever. Uh -huh. But none of us knew what that was. everybody else in the freaking world mm -hmm. had the same idea that year. Mm -hmm. So we had to stand in line for like three and a half hours. Oh Lord. And, you know, we got in line at four o'clock, 4.30. We're sitting down at eight. By then, no food is good. Oh, no. When you've been hungry. And I remember my aunt was, like, arguing. Because by the time we get there, it was 14 of us. Yeah. And we're finally to the front of the line. Oh, God. 8 o'clock. Right? Starving. Stomach inside out. Yeah, mad. Oh, pissed. Pissed mm -hmm. at my grandma. But what you going to do? She black. <laughs> she ain't going to... What you going to do? Mm -hmm. Shut up. So, my aunt is like... The guy's like, uh, we, we won't be able to seat you together. For like mm. another 45 minutes. Okay. But we can seat you with two tables near each other mm. right now. We will stay until we sit together. We was like, Auntie, no ma'am. <laughs> we are going to sit. I don't care if we all sit in one single chair. Yeah. Did you? Maybe. Okay, it's on your face. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Food was good. Wasn't good enough to overcome the attitude we all have. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm doing a little bit of better in life. Let me tell you, having a little money makes life a lot better. That's what I was going to say, going back to what you said, is um, life is definitely better now than when I was broke. Oh, man, Tim. <laughs> but I am also kind of happy, I think about this all the time, Okay. that I'm not at the level that I necessarily um, said I was going to be at um, when I was a little kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, Really? I, well, because, first, well, yet. Like, okay. I like that. I've been able to 
be with my wife, have like a couple years, you know, where we're just chilling, being yep. ourselves. Yeah. I'm glad I've been able to. No People Magazine, Tim spotted. Yeah, exactly. I'm glad that I, you know, was able to, I can still go out with the homies if I want to kick it mm -hmm. and enjoy this, like, Low key fame that I have, yeah. Without it being like TMZ at my door status, you know. Do you mean ever want that? No, no. I, I mean, is it worth it to you? Uh, it's not that I I want it, right? But I do want to do more, and I do want to like take um, everything that I'm doing to another level. And you know that that comes with it, no yeah, matter what. Yeah, yeah. That's the part that I've been really struggling with this year, Tim. I ain't gonna hold you. Hmm. The bigger your platform gets. Mm. People's perception of you changes. Yeah. And, and you haven't actually done anything different. That's I know. Fans, friends, family. And it's almost inevitable. It's no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you going to do? Go back and work at CPK? Mm -hmm. Me, go back and work at Boeing? You can't. But it's the negative part of, right. of the climb. Like, you don't want it to be like that, mm -hmm. but it be like that. Mm -hmm. And you kind of go to a point where, like, damn, you kind of understand why celebrities maybe don't want to talk to anybody because then it's like... Damn. You get that. The less you say, the less will be taken out of context Damn. and taken the wrong way. I get it, bro. Mm -hmm. I get why people only rock with people they've known prior to their ride. Mm -hmm. Because the more people you expose yourself to, the more people you can take advantage of. Like Rihanna, the Kendrick Lamar song talk about the, the accountant trying to take advantage of her. Mm. Kevin Hart had a situation where his boy tried to blackmail him. Like mm. It's like, that stuff's heartbreaking. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But... You're still ambitious. Mm -hmm. You can't stop because you you know that might come there. You know, mm -hmm. it's just like playing football. You know, you might get your leg broken. You might get CTE. But it's when you, you know, doing what you love to do, it's hard to tell a person not to do that. I even mean, though they know the risks associated with and it. And especially, Kev, when I feel like I was kind of like a part of the reason why I was put here is to really like rep for Asian dudes too. You absolutely are. So I feel like I can't stop. You know, Your representation. Listen. I've been lucky to know a lot of cool Asian dudes, mm -hmm. but the stereotypes, you are a stereotype breaker. Yeah, thank you're you. You're cool, <laughs> you rap, even without the rapping, you know what I mean? Like, right. we're just cool. Thank you, You kid. know what I mean? Like, oh, I was just watching, did you watch the Bruce Lee, like, water the, the, thing? The 20 for 20? 30 for 30? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, no, it's on my, it's, it's queued up, but I haven't watched it. Yeah. I didn't realize how much, honestly, I didn't realize how much I didn't know about Bruce Lee. Mm. All I knew was, was a Kung Fu movie. Mm -hmm. And he did like the Green Hornet. Mm. He had done a lot of... I didn't know he lived in Seattle. I lived in Seattle for 13 years. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. he was actually buried in Seattle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that either. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was from uh, from Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. But even he was a stereotype breaker because he, he played a regular... In the Green Hornet, he wasn't like... It wasn't all Kung Fu. Mm -hmm. He was just a dude who mm -hmm. happened to be Asian. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... See, now... If I could be a dude that just happens to be Asian, oh, go. But you're already like doing that a little in bit. your own way. You just and here's the other thing, Tim. I want I want to ask you this because you've mm -hmm. been on this part of Hollywood. Media is changing. Mm -hmm. You know, like my kids. When we were kids, you watched Turtles at three thirty yes. after school. Mm -hmm. If you got them at four o'clock, Turtles was off. Oh, but you saying the kids can watch it whenever they want? They have no kind. They don't even know what channel Turtles is on. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even work like that. Mm -hmm. They go to YouTube, mm -hmm. Turtles, or they might go to Hulu or Netflix, but they don't know what like what company produced Turtles right. before they would have to turn to Cartoon Network. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, would you rather be ahead of the curve? Mm. You know, right now you could be working at a newspaper. Mm -hmm. People in the newspaper didn't realize the newspaper wasn't going to be as valuable mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. But you know, that's a slow thing. Like even right now with Corona, mm -hmm. Hollywood. If you want to make a movie right now. You could probably get a movie up and going faster than MGM could. Oh, by myself. By yourself. I think about that all the time. Because of the unions and this, you could yeah. hit me up and, yeah. you know, camera guy, you know, editor. Mm -hmm. You could probably so safely social distance and have a movie shot and done much faster than Netflix could. And then you could sell that movie to Netflix. And that's what I think I want to do. I'll be thinking about that. I'll be thinking about that a lot. Especially so are we chasing a, a, a dinosaur? Right. Or are we the beginning of the new thing? Well, you know what, man? Both. <laughs> because we're where we are because we've been chasing the dinosaur. You know right. What I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The reason I even got on YouTube was because, like, Hollywood wasn't doing what I wanted it to. So I was like, I got to do it myself, right? Because I was right. still chasing that, right? Yeah. And I've said this before. I've been on YouTube for 
like 16 years now. That's crazy. And I feel like I'm just beginning to get my foot in the door for the opportunities that I originally was pursuing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they're finally looking at like um, this online talent pool. That's real talent. But yeah, but and, and also it helps that not everybody that has a following is good. What do you mean? Because... I've literally never heard anybody say that. Well, so check, I'm very curious. Check this out. Because Hollywood is finally looking online for a talent pool because they know they have to. Yeah, yeah. But so many people are whack. I rise above. <laughs> like, a lot of people got followings for chugging oh, cinnamon God. or doing stupid mukbangs, right? <laughs> but... They can also go to my channel and see I can write, I can yeah. act, you know, I yeah. can um, I can rap, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so you're using this as a vehicle, but it's not the main thing. Some people, it's their only thing. Mm -hmm. The um, fake pranks is all they have. And, and if, hey, look, if it, if you making money, do your thing. I'm sure the eight year olds love it, but but soon those eight year olds turn nine, and then they go, "How did I think this was real?" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've never heard anybody put it like that. Yeah, because so that's why I always feel like I'm in a good position where they're looking over at the online side mm -hmm. but and and it may seem like competition is a uh, is steep <laughs> right it's not a whole lot of people that can actually deliver because i've also been on sets where they're like man god thank god you're here because we tried to work with somebody from this app and it wasn't it you know oh you know i know Tim. <laughs> oh i'm not even talking about that <laughs> I know you weren't talking about that, <laughs> but I remember that moment when I was like, oh, whew. But look, I'm not even trying to knock that moment because I realized I've been Absolutely. where that person's been before. Yeah. Where I went onto a set and um, was completely unprepared and wasn't until after I realized, man, they probably think all YouTube people are yeah. so shit. You know? You're not going to eat that uh, hair? No, I'm not even turning <laughs> Let me that. look inside yours. Have you seen Bizarre Foods on, on, could you do that? I would love to do Bizarre Foods. Really? That's why I started doing, uh, have you seen my other Send Foods? Yes, my other for the show? you, <laughs> that's the, um, you had eaten the live squid thing. Oh, the live octopus. Oh, Hey, man. Kev, that was kind of, kind of, kind of popping. Was it really? Yes. Like, it was like jarring to look at. <laughs> but it's but a movie. I know. Well, here's the thing. It's not actually alive. It's, so, it's is it the nerves? It's moved because the nerves are still yeah. And then when something in the in the soy sauce when you pour it on there, it reacts with the nerves. Oh, so it keeps it moving. Um, so, so it was designed to do that, I guess. God made them that way, dog. Bro, to when eat I with tell soy you, sauce. I can't get past. See, that's what I. This is what I <laughs> am used to. <laughs> Me and Trevor kept going back to it because we were like, really, I don't know what it is. I'm liking this. I thought you weren't gonna hit me up no more when when, when I couldn't do that. Oh yeah, you were supposed to be on one of those. I had my son's birthday party, <laughs> and I didn't look at the date right. Mm-hmm. It's okay, Kev. But you gave me another chance. I know, man. Look, and we're I'm here. here. I'm never gonna stop hitting you up, Kev. But I, I appreciate I it. I told you that. You need a dream come true. <laughs> Fans of Tim, you may not know this. <laughs> I've told Tim he kind of gets a little uncomfortable. He never lets it show. <laughs> so I'll look directly in the camera and tell you this part. I used to be at Boeing, <laughs> two monitors, fake working at one, watching Tim on the other one. <laughs> I'm like, man, Tim's gonna be my boy one day. Hey. And I was in Seattle. There's no reason I shouldn't believe that. <laughs> and Tim's my boy one day. We here. I'm telling you, Tim, I was the worst employee on earth. <laughs> uh, no, I get it. My dad used to work for an airline too. Did he? Hamilton Sunstrand or something like that. Well, he was, that was back in the day. Yeah, Never before they went under. That. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, do you like Hamilton? Huh? Did you like Hamilton? Yeah, I love Hamilton. That's crazy. You're the first person who can really rap that liked Hamilton. I, I, saw I like, found like a lot of people with the talent thought it was corny. I saw it like four times. I loved it. I loved it. I saw it live four times. I saw it live here. Yeah. And I saw it on Broadway. And I had tickets to take my kids to see it here. But shout out to Coronavirus. I, think I didn't get to do that. Mm. But we used to listen to the CD. Mm -hmm. uh, not the CD, but you know. We still say that because we used to actually have CDs. <laughs> so my kids knew all the words. But as a creator, when I watched that play live, oh. I was inspired and also like, 
dang, I don't know if I can ever do anything this that level. Good. I know, Bruh. I know. The fact that he wrote that whole thing. But see, what I realized, and this is shout out to Lynn. He follows me on Twitter. Mm. Lucky. I know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> but it's really kind of like a collection of a lot of people being dope. Mm -hmm. Him as the writer, the guy, the music, choreographer. choreographer. Like, it's not all him. He's the right. leader. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, like it's, it's like The Office. I love The Office. Mm -hmm. You like The Office? I love The Office. Okay, good. Yeah. But I'm like, bro, I could never write that. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking of me by myself mm -hmm. writing. You know, one person can't come up with all those jokes. Oh, no, but it's no. a writer's room and some of the right. best people in Hollywood. And that's kind of what I like about the collaborative nature of this is we're all tagging each other's theme mm -hmm. making it and that's what hamilton is it's a lot of dope people choreography wardrobe you know rappers singer. that didn't like it a lot of them what they think it's corny but because they can really rap but the okay look i can understand why one would think it's corny because <laughs> of what it is in itself you feel the me? the source material yeah but the actual lyrics are so intricate, you know what I'm saying? It's like legit. The way the words are strung together, the way the music is, like, how do you not appreciate that as a musician? New York City is insidious? Yeah. Oh. She's singing, rapping, dancing, walking. Yeah. Amazing voice. She kills that. It's one of the best. When everything ever. rewinds. Oh, uh, rewind, rewind, rewind. Live, rewind. that was crazy. Damn. The first time I saw it, I, I could not keep up, though. Oh, because it was so fast. It was so fast. I, know. I was just like, I don't even know. What's, I, I liked it. I know. But I was like, I don't know what's happening. I didn't know right what's now. going on. Yeah, yeah, same. Yeah, because was, I, didn't, I don't know the history. Either. Me neither. <laughs> I was like, when I went there, I was like, him? I never really even hear, bro. Is he the dude on the $10 bill? <coughs> and then Lafayette with the French accent. Yeah, all it was a lot. Did you see it earlier? When did you see it? Was it original cast or later on? Nah, I never got to see the original cast. Okay. Uh, I, I, but I did see it in New York uh, and then I saw it in Chicago and then in LA. Were you just happened to be in those places, or you went? I, I just happened to be in New York shooting while and out. Okay. And then um, I actually went with Budrum, Shannon Budrum. Really? Well, no, no, I, it wasn't for while and out. I was out there for we were out there for a panel for some. Um, well, you're a panel master. I love panels. You are a panel. When I hit you for my conference, you're like, if I could be on a panel, <laughs> I'd do it. Yeah, if I, I could just show up and talk about myself. Yeah. <laughs> easy. Um, so we were just doing a panel, and uh, we happened to be in New York. I really wanted to watch Hamilton. I had a hook up through SeatGeek. Mm. And so I had two tickets. I had no one to go with at the time. So mm -hmm. I was like, Budrum, she was out there for the panel too. I was like, are you down? She's like, of course. She extra didn't know what was going on because she's Canadian. So oh, she had no yeah. type of history. <laughs> so she was like, I, I like it. I just, I don't, I can't, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> um, and then so, but the, of course, the more you see it, the more you yeah, understand. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, okay. He was okay, okay. I watch YouTube videos on it. Bro, I be listening to the soundtrack crying. I love it, man. <laughs> it is so good. Mm -hmm. Like, and I get the, it has criticisms of like, right. historical accuracies. And not fair, right? Right. But as a piece of art, mm -hmm. and, a, and a way of telling stories and like using hip hop as a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I used to be in theater. Same. So it was like, oh man, this is, this is, and as a property that he owns, mm -hmm. oh, he's going to make money on that till the end of time. So check this out. He follows you on Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. Here's something that the Rona messed up for me. He got that new musical coming out where his old musical is coming out as a new movie in the yep. Heights. Um, so a company I do brand deals with, they hit me up and they were like, how would you feel about going to New York? And freestyling with Lin Manuel to promote in the Heights. I was like, what? man. First of all, I gave them my rate, but I said, whatever I've done that they before. can do, I'm down. I'll just, just make this happen <laughs> yes. on a personal level. But like, if they're paying me, great. Right. But I'm down. Right. And then Dorona happened, and everything got pushed. Oh. Uh, yeah. But was that the worst thing you lost to Dorona? Um, yeah, well, I, <laughs> that's why we are in the driver's seat. Yeah. Because you actually have the like ability to create your own content. Mm. All these content companies, it's so much easier to license than to produce. Yeah. And if you give them great licensable content that's you can produce for pennies on the dollar because of who you are, relationships, your skill. Mm -hmm. You can sell it to them for what's cheap to them is lucrative for you. That's true. That's my whole thing. I mean, I definitely think about like, you know, like, because what's the, I mean, you know, like, like you've seen, I'm trying to write a movie right now. Yeah. Um, and I always think like, 
I've been doing these five to seven minute sketches for the past ten years. If I just did a, a long one of those, so I'm saying, it's a Tim, <laughs> it's a movie. Yeah, you got you got DPs. I got DPs. You I know got editors. I know really good cinematographers, and, and all you got that. people who would act in it on the strength. You've done so many favors in this city. <laughs> You could get it produced for relatively nothing. I was gonna do your your convention for free. You were, <laughs> and that's why I owe you favors. You want me to act in it? I'll act in it, promote it. Because when I do my movie, I'm gonna hit you up. Of course, you're, you're part of the reason why I got the job at ADD. What you mean? Fun story. Tell me, please. Was working on uh, with spoken reasons. Uh huh. I'm pitching a movie about him and my kids. Okay. And because we had done this sketch with Awesomeness that did really well. Mm -hmm. Where's my milk? Mm -hmm. And when I was pitching um, the CEO at the time and Russell, I was like, yo, this is how you do this movie. You don't just have me and Spoken Reasons. Mm. You go to a barbershop and Dormtainment is the barbershop, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And you make you make someone like Tim De La Ghetto, the artist formerly known as, <laughs> at the time, the villain. Like, you, he, mm. he's... And, you know, Tim has his own fan base and Dormtainment has their own fan base. Right. Spoken Reasons has... You know, and they're like some crossover, but not all. Mm hmm and I named some other YouTubers for, you know, women in the movie. You in so what it showed them is like, oh, he really knows what he's talking about. He mm -hmm. knows the like landscape of this thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at that time they were hiring a lot of TV people to come in. Mm -hmm. And those people don't know how to budget for this and they don't know any other players. Mm -hmm. So when I was you, you know, using your name, mm -hmm. they were like, Man, <laughs> like the movie never got made, but mm -hmm. I got the job. Hmm. Well you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to have a movie deal with ADD too. Didn't happen. You were. Yeah. They called me in for a meeting. They were like, "We just got a bunch of money to do some movies. We would love to do whatever movie you want to do." And I had a couple just written down concepts. I remember this. And I was like, "Let's do it." I signed the contract, sent it back, and they were like, oh, "Some things are changing. Never mind." <laughs> <laughs> That's why you can't really announce anything in this industry. Yeah. Until it's done. And you know what? To go back to what we were talking about earlier, this industry, man, like, you really have, like, whenever people ask me for advice about yeah. getting into this industry, I always tell them, you have to not get discouraged when you get rejected or when you, when things yeah. fail or fall apart, because that's just how it is. You got to get used to getting disappointed a hundred times before you, you even potentially get a uh, promising yes because somebody who told you no is going to tell you yes later right Especially, like, yeah when you're on the other side of the table which you've been mm -hmm. when you're casting you realize everybody can act mm -hmm. you literally can pick on height weight skin tone color yeah. the vibe of the person mm -hmm. but it's not it's hardly ever can this person act like we all can act mm -hmm. it just depends it just depends on what they want mm -hmm. but when you're a good person people are like oh they didn't they weren't right for this mm -hmm. but they might be right for that Later. That's why I'm super fake. Because <laughs> I want to make sure and not burn any bridges. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> I'm telling you, I use you as an example a lot about how to be in this industry because so many people get passed on jobs because of their personality, mm. not their talent. Oh, they're like, 100%. you be in the room and they're like, ah, oh, just no. Oh. Mm hmm. You know, people don't even say what it is. Like, oh, what about this guy or this girl? People are like, oh, yeah. I was on set with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's it. I mean. Just that breath. It's <laughs> is You're done. It's true. People are like, oh. Because, you know, you're on set 12 hours. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. Even for one day, you don't want to be on there with a person who's a jerk. 100%. Or even someone just, just is annoying. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm full. I got a lot. I am not full, but <laughs> I am tired of this. It always happens with crab legs. <laughs> I get to a point where I'm just like, okay, I just want to wash my hands. Yeah. I want to check my phone. Yeah. I want to pee. Yeah. It was great. Hey, and the conversation was great too. Man. I had a great time, Tim. I appreciate you coming oh. through. You are you are a mess. I <laughs> I'm already a messy eater. That's why I usually I don't and I asked for this. You did. I could have said Burger King, I could have said Popeyes. But it was everything. No, I no, I'm glad you said this because I was I've I've been I've been having a hankering for the, <laughs> for the seafood boil situation. And wifey, you know, like she likes it when I peel it for her. You know what I'm saying? Like she's like you. She won't eat the uh, the shri the lobster head guts like I do. If anything, if I peel the shrimp nice for her, she'll get down. I, you um, know, there's a lot of shrimp. Left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just I'm, they're looking in my soul. You can take that home. I'm okay. <laughs>
<laughs> Shrimp doesn't really travel well. <laughs> I'm definitely going to have crab legs for dinner. Uh, maybe even breakfast. We'll see. Crab legs for breakfast? <laughs> no, crab leg omelet is lit, though. Hey. Crab, crab Benedict? How do you feel about leftovers for breakfast? Are you are you a breakfast for breakfast person or a leftovers for breakfast? Nah, I'll eat anything. Yeah, okay, me too. I, I prefer breakfast, but if it's something I really like liked yeah and i had it for dinner i'll go right back i'm definitely a and maybe this is for me being an only child and yeah. you know my parents you know having to work and stuff but i'm definitely a spaghetti for breakfast steak for breakfast <laughs> it's steak a, yeah i'm talking well, about steak and eggs is a thing but I'm you t- just mean steak I'll, just, I'll have the steak and leftover baked potato for breakfast <laughs> i don't know if i do that. that's how i get down really Kev. yeah you're not gonna be hungry till four o'clock then Little bit of it. it's leftovers. Oh, that's true. <laughs> it's not a whole steak dinner. That's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you subscribe, follow Kev on stage. Yeah. Um, and subscribe to Tim. Don't just watch this and you're recommended. If this came up recommended, you click that button, smash that like button, notification down. You know what's crazy? The mukbangs gave me more new subscribers than anything else. It's crazy how many different types of content you've done. You're the you're the master of the pivot. I've been trying. I, you gotta evolve with the, you, with the you, change of times. Evolve or die, man. It's a must. Evolve or rust. Must bang. Hi <laughs> right, guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. That thing is hot. The royal penis is clean, your highness. Thank you, king shit.